and Dream Coil into Wukong's command, into the Rolling Thunder, into the Blood Right. There's just so much synergy right now with the side of GXR where I can't say the same with Dream Maker's Draft. It just feels like it's, you know, we, we can all do some damage to single target, but we we really aren't working together right now with this draft. So I'm wondering how they how they try and close this one out. Because really, if you if you if you get out of this laning stage, they're just going to run you down on GXR because they know they've got the superior team fight. They're going to stick with the single pickoff potential here with the with the Beastmaster, and I suppose that does add to add to some team fight. But I am still very concerned. Yeah, I think the big thing the Beastmaster adds is not just maybe more control with Aurora, but really down to early tempo. So the Clinks can join you for these early pushes, early fights. The Ore in the Beastmaster is going to help the Clinks out massively. Um, you've got the Overlord timing as well on the Beastmaster to watch out for. So this does give them a way to play pretty quick here on Dreammaker's End. And that was something that was sort of lacking in the last game. Like, they did have the Cottle, they did have the LC, but they couldn't really force the fights out in their terms. So I think the Beastmaster simplifies that. It gives you vision out as well with the Hawks. As you mentioned, with the Monkey King, you know, that's something a lot of teams abuse, just flying vision all over the place, scouting out. So they can kind of preempt the movements from GXR with a couple of well-placed Hawks watching over some good spots. They're going to need to play pretty tight here on Dream Maker to kind of get all these timings right. As again, last time around, they had a pretty decent draft. I don't think the draft is a massive issue, just the execution. Same thing goes with this draft. Like There are some good timings to hit. There are some good early spikes to play around. They just have to kind of know when to go and when to group up and where to play on the map. A final ban out now on the Freemaker. Banning out the troll, interestingly enough, assuming that it might be a, a support Monkey King we're looking at here. They might be right. We did see this yesterday. They did flex the monkey into a support, and I believe that was... Jeez, who was it? It was Q playing it, I'm pretty sure. See the Gyrocopter band out as well, so Dream Maker, pretty positive that we are looking at a, a support Monkey King here. And uh, maybe something else for GXR in that position 1 role. We'll see what uh, what GXR wants to do though. In your dream, do you feel like playing MK again? Do you feel like picking up something else? Well, they've got about a minute 3 seconds reserve time, so plenty of time to think about it. I think the lane matchup for Monkey versus Beastmaster isn't too bad. So even if they force the Monkey King safe, it should still feel fine. I don't think you have too much to worry about in terms of getting the initial farm out. I think you might want a harder support to just play. Again, with a Pangolier 5 or 4, you do want something that is stable lockdown. Like you've got Jingu, Rolling Thunder, uh, Blood Right to an extent, Dream Coil as well. But you want something to at least hold one of them down in case, you know, all these ults and the longer stun from Monkey King is on cooldown. So something to kind of set up in lane as well for the Monkey King if you are going to go for the safe lane. Um, hmm, I'd say a Lion would be would be a pretty good pick. Can slide through if they want it here on GXR side. Lion plus Bloodseeker combination strong down the line. Uh, plays well with a puck. Gives you the Hex control for the Clinks or the Wind Ranger. And can still have a delete Ooh. button. Okay, they go with a Weaver instead, so it is going to be our support monkey more than likely. Hmm, I say that, but Weaver used to be around a support as well. So there's some flexibility for GXR if they want to go back to support Weaver, which usually rushes the Ags. That'd be fun to see again, but pretty no, open-ended. I'm pretty sure it's a uh, carry Weaver. So uh, I think it's just very good against the Beastmaster, right? Like, you don't really care about the Beastmaster. You don't care about the Boars. Sakuchi deals with them very well, and I, uh, I'm i pretty positive we're looking at a support Monkey King here. Pos1 mm -hmm. Weaver. It, it just fits the bill very, very nicely against what Dream Maker has. No real catch for it either. I mean, apart from the raw, you don't really have a great way of locking him down. And even then, landing the raw against the Weaver can be very, very difficult. And I think as this Beastmaster, you're probably going to have a lot of pressure because do you do you raw the puck? Do you, do you raw the Weaver? Do you roar the uh, the Rolling Thunder, Pangolier? Like, who do you roar and who do you hold down? Well, Dream Maker, they are going to go for the mid-void spirit, it looks like, to finish things off. Uh, and by the way, although Nevermind shows that his name's changed, it is back to Chantavi Sook. I'm just going to call him Nevermind, because I think that's what he wants. But I'm not 100% I'm sure. I should have asked him in the lobby. <laughs> yeah, we'll him. see. Yeah, I forgot. I think... Uh... 
by game two, it feels like the atmosphere is more serious in love, you know? Yeah. So I wanted to give them some space to calm down. They wouldn't want to hear me rambling about names. Still, we see the lineup that is the In Your Dream Weaver. So we're going to have to see his impact. Well, Weaver in the safe lane, as you mentioned, doesn't care too much about Beastmaster. You tend to just look for Javelin timing, not even full Maelstrom. Like Javelin, we've seen players just rotate mid, get a push in teamfight from there and run off. The control from Dreammaker is still not very clean with a Void Spirit last pick. Like the remnants there that could cut off the Weaver or the Shikuchi, but it's still not very reliable. So Dreammaker is going to have to stack their stuns properly on a single target or kind of focus in on one target at a time to clean up and just get the burst damage off. They do have a good spike once CDR hits his Maelstrom timing and maybe even the Orchid. And that's when you can really run around, start to melt heroes' faces. And of course, the Beastmaster with the helm of the Dominator and our Overlord does give you some good push tempo. So that's what we have to watch out for from Dreammaker. Hit those timings and just push down lanes. Okay, we'll get into it. Game number two between Dreammaker and GXR set to get underway. Yeah, this one does pan out. I think GXR, I mean, it's probably easy to tell, but I think their draft is just superior in every way. I'd like to see Dreammaker make this draft work, and they do have some pretty imbalanced heroes right now, the Omni and the Clinks, and, and of course the Beastmaster. But when you factor in the way GXR is playing today, and even their draft, it, it just it feels very hard to execute this kind of kind of draft from Dreammaker. I mean, I'd love to see it. It just seems like it's going to be a pretty big challenge. Yeah, a lot of things have to go right. They've got to. Really play around their power spikes early on very well. Play around their level 6 spikes very fast. Like once they've got Roar, they have to commit for a kill. On the top lane, look for the push ASAP. Uh, get the Dominator Overlord timings on Chantabisuk. And look to just constantly run down. Or like You can do that with a Clinks, with a Beastmaster. But it does require very precise uh, timing overall and i think gxr has a lineup to kind of run and gun as well so it's not going to be very easy to pull off against that but we'll see if they can hit those spikes you see gxr so sort of split up blood. we've got joe cam scouting out in the courier form maybe can get a good cut off onto that bot water rune and you've got paulson kind of posturing for the triangle rune as well so they might look to try to go for a tree bounty rune start here that they may we got a nice deep observer ward in that, uh, that, that ancient camp. The Chantafi Sook will be able to take it. CZY gets the other. So it's going to be a 2 for 2 trade on the bounties. Very early obs ward though. In that uh, that ancient ancient uh, ancient spot there. I suppose they are going to want to stack for the clinks quite a bit. So it is to be expected that they, uh, they automatically block that. But I, I wasn't expecting those ancient camps to be stacked that early. And I also wasn't expecting them to use an Observer Ward to block the camp. Thought Polison would opt to use a Sentry, but well, that is not the case. It does allow you to be aggressive towards mid. I think that should allow Polison to snipe out the water rooms a little bit easier. Look for the opportunity to just shut down our Rose on the Void Spirit. Of course, we see the top lane. Polson is leaning within your Dream and the Weaver. And he is up against Chantavisuk on that Beastmaster. And, of course, Trezam on the pause for Omni Knight. He is just going to look for the pull. Early levels here for the side of Dreammaker isn't particularly amazing. You've got to sustain, but Paulson's doing the right thing. He's just pulling his own wave back. He's looking to try to connect the two waves or at least just give some free farm out towards uh, In Your Dream in the end. Yeah. They blocked the launch camp. Paulson, he's just going to drag it behind the tier 1 tower. So uh, Ultimately, the equilibrium should just reset the wave of GXR. Well, we'll have to wait and see. Of course, mid lane, Alacrity and Rose going to be added again. Void Spirit against the Puck. Uh, seems like Rose is going to have a decent enough time with the CS, but so will Alacrity. And as the levels go up, it does become a little more challenging against the Puck. So uh, Alacrity will be providing a lot of harassment the way of Rose. We'll see how long Rose can sustain himself in this lane. I mean, he already has the bottle up anyway, so he, he should be just fine. As long as he does get his water runes and his bounty runes, he, he shouldn't be forced to leave the, uh, the lane too early on, if ever. Yeah, we've seen this matchup multiple times before. I'd actually say, based on those matchups, on the history, the Void Spirit does have a slightly better time. You can play with your Resonant Pulse to avoid a lot of the right-click harassment of Alacrity. You can wave clear a little bit easier with that Resonant Pulse as well. And for Alacrity, it's down to Illusory Orb. Like, the damage output's good. 
but it does feel like the pulse with the utility you get is a little bit better for the Void Spirit despite being a melee hero in this matchup. And if you land a good Atrium, you have a lot of opportunities to be aggressive. But Alacrity is doing a good job of dodging out a lot of big spells and just keep up in the CS. So perfectly even mid lane start so far. And as you mentioned, down to rune control, we'll have to see who does have the edge. But you have better vision on GXR. Right, they've, they've got vision in the bot rune, they've got vision on the bounty rune triangle, so that should make it easier for Alacrity to also abuse that fact and just keep that uh, momentum going for himself. So it gives us a chance to look at the last lane while things are slow. You've got Mizu in the Bloodseeker, aided by Jokam on that pause for Monkey King. They're up against CDR on the Clinks and CZY on the Wind Ranger. So a dual archer lane, two melee up against Bloodseeker does allow you to keep the harass game up. You can sort of try to temper back Mizu with the Searing Arrows up. There's not much counterplay Mizu can do. They do have that stun combination with Blood Rite against ranged heroes, so it's pretty hard to land those spells, and that should lead to much more stable farm for CDR in this lane. Certainly so. A lot of harassment out here against GXR, but we did see the similar kind of thing in the last game against Mizu, and he still was able to win out the lane and just come back throughout the mid-game, so... I'm sure he's not going to be too concerned about this Clinks. In fact, his CS is ahead of the Clinks right now, so everything's still going rather smoothly for GXR. And in fact, we're yet to see a first blood four minutes into this game. Neither team really finding an opportunity quite yet. Both teams just kind of accepting the farm and sitting back and relaxing for a while. We are seeing Trazam. He is going to stack that triangle, but must have realized as by this point that the, the Ancient Camp is currently blocked. I believe he does have a sentry ward on the way right now, and he should be able to sort that out very, very soon. But he has indeed missed a couple stacks, so we'll see how much he can he can get the stacked up for the clinks. Because it is going to be very important to get that farm ASAP for the uh, for the pos position one clinks. Is it does need a lot of gold to be effective and broken, but once it does have that gold, it is exceptionally strong. But it it really is very dependent on that network. Yeah, you you gotta. Get that fast Maelstrom up. That's key timing. Maelstrom, Orchid is what we tend to see from Clinks players nowadays. So lots of farm. Lots of time they have to stall out for. Again, they've got good momentum on the side lanes to play with if they want to. If Beastmaster hits that level 6 timing with the Dominator, you can look for kill opportunities or just pressure on the lane to get that done. CGXR, uh, Jokam just kind of scouting out on the Monkey King. Didn't quite get the creep pull, but... All things considered, Mizu is not lagging too far behind in CS. He's still ahead of CDR, down to the wave clear that you are provided with the Blood Ride. Whereas for Clinks, you don't really have the best wave clear here yet. Maybe you could with a Burning Barrage, but he hasn't really put the skill points in. CDR is just holding oh, off Rose. now. Rose out playing Alacrity in the mid lane. Does manage to secure the kill on the puck. Joe Cam is going to rotate in, but it's all too late, I think. Is Rose, he's going to take a bit of harass here. Joe Cam might be able to proc the Jingu. In fact, Rose is out of mana. He's going to be able to get the Aether Remnant off. Joe Cam, Boundless Strike is out. Is he really going to be able to get a kill? No. Astral Step is there. He was just waiting out the cooldown. Joe Cam, he'll still chase him down, but it ultimately won't be able to secure the kill. And Rose, he'll TP back to the fountain, get a free reset for himself. And unfortunately for Alacrity, he was one creep away from hitting level 6. Had he had the Dream Coil, he probably could have got that Void Spirit kill, but won't be able to get that lucky. Excellent. Really good play coming out there from Rose, holding on to his mid matchup. And again, the Void Spirit just feels like it has a slightly better time in terms of kill opportunities up against a Pock. Uh, once you hit that level 6 mark, nuke damage is good. Shantavi Sukdo. You can get caught out. The Beast Master looks like he is set to fall, but no purification does come in. It won't matter because Joe Cam, he can swing that. That big pole from a mile away, and the Monkey King it does manage to secure the kill. The early rotations are starting to pay off. Uh, Mizu, it's okay. I don't know if they really have enough damage. Oh, never mind. Rose is going to rotate, and they do secure the kill. But now Alacrity might just find the Clinks and does. So you'd have to argue it's a worthwhile trade. In fact, they even got Rose now, and he's out Astral Step charges. He'll dissimilate. Lacrity still with the double damage. Shackles not going to lock him down. CZY is going to get jumped on here by our puck, and he is going to drop. So Lacrity really cleaning up through the mid lane into the bot lane. A pretty unfortunate set of events here for Dream Maker. 
Yeah, it's a ton of initial gold coming out from Alacti, making up for that earlier death. He is trying to rush the travels up on the puck, so he wants to take a more active position. Paulson playing tag with Trezam, again, trying to just keep pressure on the triangle and prevent the stack from being built up. They have managed to catch out, though. Yeah, nice shaft on Docam Rose. He'll just fly him up with the resonant Your pulse. Alacrity nowhere nearby to, to really help out that monkey. Nice little rotation there from CZY, and well, we yet to see the real influence of the uh, the position five Wind Ranger, but I suppose that is kind of the start of it. Nice little shackle to set up. Uh, shackle is a pretty good disable. If it does land like a 2.6 <laughs> all the way up to 3.8 seconds, fairly low cooldown. So it's a ton of good control for CZY, and he is prioritizing Shackle overall, uh, rather than anything else. Although then, mid again. Yeah, Rose. Heavenly Grace is going to make sure he remains safe. It's one of the things with a good Omni Knight player. He's always around, always ready to get that Heavenly Grace off, and we've just seen it so many times. Well, once it comes out, there's really not much you can do. If they're, if they're initially healthy enough, you've got no chance on the heavenly, once the Heavenly Grace is there. Just uh, breaks off that engagement. It's a lot of commitment from GXR dragging the heroes up. But overall, you're using that space quite nicely. And in your dream, is just left alone on the Weaver. Level 7 now, saving up for his Maelstrom. Already has a Falcon Blade up. Shantav Isuk is getting his Helm of the Dominator out. So the Beastmaster can start to apply pressure on Tier 1 Tower. Has the Roar ready, but doesn't look like Dreammaker's really playing around that timing, opting to chase around elsewhere. Paulson taking a lot of damage. Those searing arrows, even at level 2, do really hurt. Well, CDR, you know what he wants. He needs that Maelstrom up. Joe Cam's not going to allow him to, to farm it up peacefully, but Rose is going to intercept now. And Joe Cam going to be in a bit of trouble, but the Aether Remnant does miss. It shouldn't matter too much, because they'll still have the damage with the Resident Pulse. Rose will pick up his third kill of the game here on the Void Spirit. 4-3 to three now. Still a 1k net worth lead the side of GXR, but it seems like Dreammaker are off to a pretty decent start in this game too. Yeah, they're getting their initial aggression off. You do have to watch for the smoke rotation from GXR though. They've got the roar, but it's only one target to can lock in. Well, Shackle's going to be off the mark. Paulison, he's going to try and go onto Trezam, but Chantav is still going to go immediately for the raw route onto the park and Alacrity. Underestimating the lockdown that was there by Dreammaker. They easily commit the raw there onto the park and secure the kill. Yeah, just a bit forward. The rest of his team didn't run up with him with his jump out with the orb. And that just left him very vulnerable. Good pick off from Dreammaker. Grouping up top now. Playing with that first roar. They can look for the push. As they do have, again, the dominated creep up in front. Yeah, T1 Tower. Going to be pretty easy to take out with this Beastmaster. Shackle there onto Polison. And Lacry, though, going to move in with the Dream Curl. And now the double Blood Rite is going to fly out. And it looks like they have got the Void Spirit and Trazam on the Omni. And Polison, he wants to fight a bit more. He won't dive the T1 Tower, though. He'll check the side, check the secret shop. Nothing around. But they do successfully defend the tier 1 top. And they get two kills for themselves. So you've got to be happy if you're GXR at the moment. Yeah. It's uh, great to compensate for that death on Lagarty. It also buys a ton of space out for In Your Dream. He's playing bot lane now. I believe the Maelstrom's flying out on our Weaver. So he's got the uh, Dragonlance queued up next. And you're hitting some really early spikes on Weaver. Still about 100 gold ahead of CDR on the Clinks. Not a massive amount. But that does allow our Weaver to play fairly quick here, although CDR, his bot jungle is being taken over. They have a ton of sentries just to protect the Clinks from any sort of rotations and any sort of forward vision. But he still has to be super cautious. They take the top lane, tier 1. Shantavasuk does that by himself. So the Weaver could play in the top jungle, maybe get some more security in the triangle and start clearing out some stacks. And they're going to probably have to give away to bot tier 1 in exchange. There is enough time for a defensive TP out. The roar is back up. They do want to force a fight. There is no stacks here for this Klinks. Uh, Trazam, he's going to try and stack up now. Bit of a shame here for CDR. Like, again, you are very reliant on a massive golden flux for this Klinks to, to get to that broken stage. 
Uh, I suppose they wanted to be careful because GXR was always checking, so maybe just feeling like they didn't want to give it the, the way of GXR, and that's fair enough. And it's going to slow down this clicks a little bit. Still, Rose is going to jump in and has found out Mizu. They have the damage. Well, that's a nice Ooh. shackles out. CZY. Using the Centaur. Heavenly Grace is there. Mizu somehow still alive, but does eventually die. Still Joe Cam now. And Paulson gonna try and move in on to Rose. Another Shackle's gonna hold down the Monkey King. And with the Aether Remnant, they're definitely gonna be able to take him out. Very forced fight from GXR, and it does not pan out. Yeah, it's working out for Dream Maker, though. Like, this is what they lacked in the first game. They're the ones Dyer's dictating the fights. Tower. They're the ones Zone. going to the opposite side of the river finding these kills and starting to make more happen. Uh, I, I think right now they need to find more objectives though. Like the mid-tier one is probably the next target on the map. Uh, once they take that, the top jungle opens up even more. You have to be cautious about how much space you give in your dream. We've seen GXR do this before where they, where they sacrifice their entire team to give in your dream space to farm. And in your dream has been left alone down bot. Still up there in the top two of net worth. Alacrity still standing at number one despite a couple of those deaths. Um, does mean that despite these trades, I think GXR aren't feeling too bad about it. As long as they hold on to tier twos, maybe hold on to the mid tier one, they're still in a pretty good position here. But they are. Tier one mid tower, a massive deal here. GXR really don't want to let this go down for free. Alacrity's going to try and move in, but doesn't find the opportunity for a dream coil. Tell me your name again. Yeah, and GXR. They're going to have to try and hold this tier 1 for a bit longer. Aether Remnant is going to catch Alacrity. Has his whole team behind him, however. So, not going to be caught out. A golden thread. But it's like GXR. I mean, you can't really leave this mid lane now. Because if you do, the tier 1 tower is, gonna, is just going to eventually drop. And in the meantime, Dream Maker, they'll just try and farm the, the rest of the map. So, it's really great play so far. From this Radiant End. Definitely making the draft look very nice. And hell, CDR, he's overtaken the, the net worth board. He's top of the net worth. Going straight into that Rod of Atos into the Glade near. Mid lane though. Looks like Rose does end up getting a little bit too greedy trying to get that T1 mid. And it does cost him his life, but they get the roar out onto Mizu. They'll at least get a Bloodseeker for their trouble, but here comes the Cavalry. Joe Cam pops the Wukongs. They're gonna go after Chantavi Sook. Shackles, it's off the mark. This Beastmaster should at least be going down, but now within your dream around, they can certainly chase for CDR to boot. But it looks like they are lacking the detection, so CDR is going to be able to skeleton walk out. Still a 3 for 1 trade, and the only bonus is that mid tier 1 tower does drop on GXR's end. Yeah, it's uh, still a strong objective to take for Dream Maker. Again, allows them to posture in the top jungle. Maybe even start to eye to Roshan a bit more. Get out that access point on the side of GXR. Uh, Rose still has to be a bit cautious though. But looks like they can't fully commit to GXR just yet. Yeah, Polison, Shackles is there. But with the Shield Crest damage reduction, he's not going to be taking too much damage. And we'll be able to back off. In your dream now, taking over the net worth board himself after all those, uh, those kills. So, a bit of a back and forth game. Kind of just got to pick which carry you're more afraid of. Both the exact same level as well. So, again, very close between these two. I see CDR is going to be pretty scary once the Glaipne is up. But, uh, I mean, they, they do need that extra form of control. As you saw, the, the last team Radiant's fight, like, once the roar was over, it was like, what do we do now? Like, what, do we, what do we hold these guys down with? They just kind of need to run. Because now Joe Cam is going to start getting the vision here against Dream Maker. He'll see CDR. He just needs his team to back him up. Paulson's going to be cut off, though. Rose is going to be there on the Void Spirit to make sure nobody interrupts CDR while he's farming. And instead, GXR, they, they might try to play for the mid tier 1 tower. But you've, you've got this constant defense out from CZY with that max power shot. However, the back lines. Alacrity does get a nice dream call off, but Joe Cam is going to be the first one to drop. They'll try and go onto Rose instead, but Rose, even with the rupture, appears to be just fine. As they cannot finish him off, and your dream's going to move in, but that's a great shackles out from our Windranger. They'll get Paulison down, and now CDR, he can get to work onto in your dream, forcing out the time lapse. It'll be a one for two trade. 
Still favorable though for Dreammaker. Yep, they win out. Again, they're starting to take these fights really well. The control issue we were expecting with single target control doesn't seem to be a problem because GXR are sort of streaming into fight one by one. And they've, they've got to be cautious about that once they see Dreammaker in position. It's very easy for them to just get the chain stun off and find a pickoff and force the issue. Comes Mizu. There you go, Gleipnir with the burning barrage. Just so much damage here on CDR now. GXR just unable to respond fast enough. I mean, hell, you've got a great farm farming weaver, but yeah, once he gets locked down by that Rod of Atos, or rather Gleipnir, it does become very tough. Yeah, they don't really have anything defensive on their supports to just dispel that off as well. It's a bit harder to play against that Rose. Rose? Well, he might actually blow up Alacrity, but it's going to cost him his own life, it seems. Like, as Polison, he gets stuck in the little ditch there. In Your Dream's going to try and rotate, but nobody's killed off Rose yet. He is still jumping out, and now in Your Dream, he gets shackled up. But do they have the lockdown? Not quite. He's going to be all right. Nice scape near out on the three heroes, but they got the rupture on CDR. But Heavenly Grace is going to keep him safe for at least for a little bit. As GXR, they keep trying to pursue the side of Dreammaker. But it's not enough. Remaker, they're going to be okay to back. And GXR will have to do the same. Yeah, they're, they're having issues playing against that Guardian Angel from Trazam. Like, they're going to need a Dispel, so probably a Nullfire down the line. It's still a bit too early for that, considering the farm state of GXR. And Dreammaker is just able to leverage that defensive spell really well. Again, they're, they're the one sort of dictating the terms of engagement. Rose is starting to see some confidence out from him, being so far forward, knowing that as long as the Omni Knight's behind him, he's not going to die. They're looking for the Roshan now. They know they've got the damage to take this. They get the wards out to kind of watch the area. And with the damage coming through from CDR, this should not take too long at all. The side of GXR needs to make a move fast if they want to contest. They are grouped around, but they might be a bit too late for the move in. Yeah, Roshan being chipped away at Dreammaker. Yeah, first dibs on the first Roshan. There will be no contest. They'll get away with it as now. They'll try to back out GXR. They were making their way in. Gleipni is going to be right on target. However, a nice Dream Coil going to catch out too. Rupture there again. Right onto CDR. However, he's still not dying. Joe Cam, he's jumped in with the Wukongs. Is it going to be enough though? He is dropping very, very fast and is eventually going to die. But the rest of Dreammaker are also dropping relatively fast. As CCY, he does go down. Only two left. CDR, he'll try to hold them down with the Gleipni. But it won't be enough. He'll lose the Aegis. There's now the Surrounders there. CZY, he'll try to buy back and help out CDR. He'll try to run. Skeletal Walk is there. Shackles the hold down too. And that might be enough. In fact, it will be. As CDR now, looking for a bit of a pickoff on his own. He's got the Glaive near up and we'll go after the Pango. Paulson will drop. In your dream. Trying to fight back, but doesn't have the damage up. Put at the moment. We'll have to leave now. Uh, great back and forth coming out over that Roshan. It uh, just doesn't quite line up the way for Dreammaker in the end. Uh, GXR managing to find the angles, forcing a couple of buybacks. They get a good fight in tight area, which is where Dream Coil and Rolling Thunder really shine. You just manage to get the chain stun off. You manage to get the control. Uh, they stall out long enough with Jokam. Like he jumps forward, drops Wukong. Sure, he dies in the end, but the area denial of Wukong's command is just still a massive threat, even from a support. So you have to watch for it. They are scudding out here. They are. DDR. Move in. Polison. Gleipnir gonna hold down the Pango, but. In the end, Yule Scepter going to be out. Rose is going to move in onto Joe Cam. They'd love the Monkey King, but Joe Cam should be able to run his way out as now the Raw's there. They've got Polison. And Joe Cam, he's not quite safe either. CDR still chasing him down. In your dream, he's going to be spotted out going for a creep. The Glaivney is up as well, but oh. Dream Coil is going to hold a couple down. Alacrity, he'll have to all back out, seeing the whole team's there. And Dream Maker, they really want to get aggressive. They'll try. The rest of GXR, they are going to make their retreat, and they'll be okay. It's a nice pickoff for Dreammaker. 
Now they did have to drag their entire force, but that does force GXR out. And that's time where GXR is not farming up, not building up more on this gold lead that they have on hand. 3k up, 14 to 13, still a very close game. And Dreammaker now getting to push off. Like just with that Helm of the Overlord, top tier 2 going to be pressured in. That's going to be the first tier 2 of the game. And we talked about that timing that Dreammaker were missing out on last time. They need to take that tier 2, control the jungle, take the outpost, shut down... Uh, one half of the map away from GXR and really hammer in Roche control down the line. <laughs> I love the fact that they heavily graced the golem just to make sure it can't die in Alacrity mid lane. It's just, the thing is, once you get Gleipnir, you are going to get taken out. And I'm not sure what Roche just dropped, but he dropped something on the ground after Alacrity died. He's trying to tempt the Pango into the, into the, into the team fight again, but Paulson obviously just rolled out. A Dreammaker, I mean, they must be feeling very confident right now. Everything online, hit it, hitting a ma massive power spike. Dyer's middle tower you look at CDR, top. he's still just trying to chase down this monkey. Yeah, I think for GXR's part, and this stems down to a lack of defensive items. Like, a lack of you going full in on the Dagon means he has no purge, no dispel for that Gleipnir. And once he's controlled up, he's gone. And that lack of uh, defense is really great. Rose in onto the Pango. Shackles is on target. And you know what? I hate support Wind Ranger John, but I gotta tell you, CZY, he's been very good with these shackles all game. Yeah, he's been landing every single one, getting the pickoffs needed to kind of force GXR away. Uh, they take another tier two mid. Map is really shrinking now for GXR. You are still getting good farm on in your dream, but you have to watch everyone else. GXR just don't really seem to have an answer right now. I mean, let's be frank, it's they've got damage, but I thought control was going to be a big issue for, for Dreammaker, but it just seems like as soon as this Gleipnir came out, they've at least got an AoE lockdown that that does some work here for, for the side of Dreammaker. Is, well, now there's a big group up from GXR. They have smoked up as four. CZY is going to be there to break the smoke and blink right out. Lacrity, he'll coil... He will land the coil and should be able to get the kill, but no, Rose is going to jump in. They have not got the Wind Ranger kill. In fact, they might lose Alacrity. He will phase shift. Trazam. Let's get rid of Atos stop. He will Guardian Angel and try to buy even more time. If the rest of his team are moving in, this could be a mistake though. Trazam, he's already dead. And now you might even lose your Beastmaster. He will roar. Another nice shackles. And now the burning barrage is burning right through the side of GXR. They have got a 2 for 2 for now, but with this Kling surround, it's going to be very hard for In Your Dream to survive. And I thought oh. it was going to be a bad team fight for Dream Maker, but they just find even more. CZY. He has just been so great on this Wind Ranger. And Dream Maker, they get a great team fight under their belt. Yeah, he... Make it work. They bait in GXR. The Guardian Angel stalling out long enough for the cavalry to roll in. GXR, they're playing so far forward, but they have to respect that control. Like, they have nothing defensive on any of their cores. There are no BKBs in this game from the side of GXR. There's there's no Yules on our Puck. There's no Lotus Orb on our Pangolier to purge off anything. Like, they, they have no defense against control. Like, uh, I'm surprised there's not even a Lincoln Sphere in this game just to block one of the one of the roars or the shackles and just kind of get the turnaround time there for In Your Dream. Uh, with a Scotty, he hits hard. He's got good stats, but the moment he gets roared or shackled, he's done for. Like uh, they just need some defensive items on GXR to really play against what Dreammaker has. Dreammaker, for their part, look at this aggression. They're just on top. Sam. They got Polison, but they might lose Trisam here in this top lane as he does run right into Joe Cam and Alacrity. But they had to commit the coil for that. Interestingly enough, just to make sure they could actually kill him. And that kind of goes to, to show you the state of this game right now for GXR. Like, they've got to commit the big ulties to, to actually secure a, a POS5 Omni Knight. And Alacrity, he's not safe either. He just got scanned out. He, oh, he's going to blink down south, and that should be enough. He does bait them north instead, and CZY, he's having a look in the tree line. Nice little juke spot there from our, from our puck. And in the end, CZY now, probably going to realize that he's already TP'd out. 
Game is still close though. 2k net worth advantage for Dreammaker, but I mean, that's not too much when you consider we are 10, 27 minutes into this game, number two. The GXR. Still really lacking a lot of damage, and it, it does tend to show in these team fights that they are having a very rough time. I'd say it's not damage. They, they've got damage on hand with In Your Dream and to a certain extent with Alacrity and the Dagon. It's, it's control, or rather being controlled up. They need a BKB on one, maybe a Lotus Orb and someone else to dispel off some of those, uh, some of that hold coming through from the Clinks with that Gleipnir. Because they just keep getting caught out and they just don't have saves. Their lineup doesn't have natural saving supports. They don't have BKBs, no Lotus Orb, no Yules, no Guardians, Guardian Greaves uh, to purge off on yourself. And that just allows Dreammaker to still keep playing this run and gun. They keep controlling the top jungle, they keep building that farm up, CDR, lead widening over in your dream slowly but surely. He's gonna have his own Scotty up, he's got his BKB up, so he can stand and fight up front with no worry in the world. And GXR is just, they're keeping up to an extent, they need a lot more to really fly in. They do have double rupture up with the Ags on Mizu, they just need to find the right targets to hit. A GXR. Five-man smoke up, wrapping through that mid-river. Roshan's up in 50 seconds or so, so this is great timing for either team that wins this team fight. GXR should have first dibs and CZY has been spotted, but Hawk is out, Trazam, he's gonna break the smoke of In Your Dream. GXR, they are not gonna be able to start the team fight. Instead, in the meantime, CDR, he's gonna split push the top lane and force rotations back. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, has a fight broken out? It looks like it has. They found CZY, but there's a rupture up top lane. CDR, though, he hasn't been jumped on yet, but Polison, he'll pop the Rolling Thunder. Rose, he'll intercept onto the Bloodseeker, but catches nobody. It's Cam now. The Shackles are out. The Monkey King is going to get bursted down onto In Your Dream. There's your Gust out, John. They've got the Shards up, and nobody's getting out. It does wear off, but it won't matter because Mizu, he's been caught. He will go down as Rose is looking for another, and the Aether Remnant is going to be right on target. Great team fight from Dreammaker. Nobody will die from this Radiant team. GXR just unable to find anything. Yeah, they, they can't fight into that single target control. Like we, we assumed in some form of spell immunity at this point, the BKB for In Your Dream is coming out soon. Just lacking the recipe, maybe about 1,200, 1,100 gold away. That won't make it in time for Roshan. Roshan number two with the Ag Shard going the way of Dream Maker. This is going to open up the high ground push for them as well. And uh, I think see who they hand the Shard to. It does go to Rose along with the Aegis. So, He's got the wider dissimulate. It's even harder to catch down this uh, Void Spirit at this point in GXR. They need to keep trying to play the stall game. Their high ground defense is pretty good with Dream Coil, Rolling Thunder, and the Wukongs along with the Blood Rite. So they can try to de-push very well and stall the game out from here. But there's a lot of momentum on the back of Dream Maker. 5k up, still not a massive amount, but it is starting to build up. And Dream GXR has not been able to turn that their way for quite a fair while now. And they're just trying to stall out for this Weaver. It feels like the game is starting to build off the back of In Your Dream and to a certain extent to Alacrity as well. He is trying to go for his Aeon Disc. So that's going to be his form of defense now. Just having that combo breaker on hand. Also a ways off and he doesn't have much space to farm it up. Uh, Dream Maker's just doing a good job. Keeping the pressure in the lanes. Taking over in the triangle. Getting forward vision out. They know where GXR is playing, and GXR can't really do much about it. It's a remnant. Alacrity again being caught. The Agon Interceptor from Rose making it very hard. Phase shift just in the nick of time, but they are going to surround the Gust. It's not going to hold him in. So Alacrity just barely achieving his escape as Rose. He's going to try and find a way out himself now. Ash will step towards the left. In Your Dream is going to be there, but he's focused on the end creep. And now, Rose, he jumped back in. They got the roar out, and In Your Dream, he could not time lapse in time. It's a Dream Maker into the mid tier 3 tower. GXR, it's still just looking very rough for them. Dagon out from Alacrity is at least going to get the Aegis off Rose. Can't find anything else. I mean, Inner Dream's down for another minute. 
such a long duration as Rose is there with the Yule Scepter. Collison does get caught out. Gus as well. Dagon's are out, but it won't matter as Mizu. He's been blown up again. There's your Guardian Angel just to make sure they can't even think about going for this fight. Rose, another great Aether Remnant into the Burning Barrage. Just perfect. Yeah, they, they get the control. They manage to get the punishment onto GXR. Mid rack's gone. Gonna go for tier force. No buybacks on GXR. This could be the end. One man defense for Lacti. There is a buyback in the Pango. It's gonna have to pop it. Now Rose is in. You'll step around into the Aether Remnant. What a shackle. CZY. It's just so impressive. The angles this man's finding. Onto the Ancient. And that's it. In your dream calls it. GG. They do draw out the series against GXR, and I have to admit, John, I was not expecting it. Yeah, I think considering game one from GXR and how Dreammaker did there, um, it looked like GXR had their number, but they did adapt. They managed to take some lessons from that first game. They run a much more aggressive lineup that wasn't reliant on farming up too much. They just run in, hit this timing on the Beastmaster, hit this timing on the Clinks, and just run from there. Like, they were the ones setting up the fights. They were the ones uh, dictating the terms of engagement this time around. It wasn't GXR initiating. It was really Dream Maker. I think it also boils down to some of the item buildups on Galaxy Racer. Like, you sometimes see Weavers still go for fast Lincolns, especially against Beastmasters. We didn't see any defensive items. It was, if you look, if you did manage to see the items at the end, it was only one BKB on in your dream and that's what that that's why he didn't have buyback so i think itemization fell a bit flat from gxr but good punish for, from dream maker to close out with a draw their test kind of worked out for them no i 100 percent agree i mean just fantastic result here for them in this game number two so that does mean we are going to move on to our final series of the night and that's going to be between motivate trust gaming and of course the new boom esports so a very interesting matchup one would argue Boom didn't have the, the hardest matchup yesterday, so this would be more of a test against Motivate Trust. We are going to head to a 15-minute break, but right after that break, we're going to be back with our third series of the night.